Welcome to Live at Five. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be in Psalm 31. Now, Psalm 31 is kind of a famous psalm. Of course, it was written by David, and it's a long psalm. But this psalm has been quoted by a number of biblical characters. Uh, Jeremiah, Jonah, and Jesus Christ himself uh, quoted this psalm, one verse in the psalm. Um, what David does here is he tells us three things, three things that we need to remember uh, as we go through life. So if you have your Bibles, Psalm 31, we're going to look at verses 1 through 5. First, that's, that's David's first point. He says this, In you, O Lord, do I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress, and for your name's sake you lead me and guide me. You take me out of the net they have hidden for me. For you are my refuge, and to your hands I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Now the first point that David makes is that he shows that God is one that you can trust. And what he's thinking about here as he writes this, he's thinking about the time when King Saul was chasing him. And of course, his warriors couldn't stand up to King Saul's warriors because uh, King Saul had much better equipment. So what they would do is they would run up into the rocks. David and his warriors would run up into the rocks. And that was their refuge. And that was, their, that was a place that was safe. And so what David is saying is, you know what, God, I can trust you because in the past you have kept me safe and in the future you will keep me safe. And, and he talks about, and he sees this a lot. You see this a lot in the Psalms where David calls God his rock, uh, his fortress. And that goes back to what he's talking about or what he's thinking about here is when King Saul was chasing him around. Secondly, David gives three reasons why he can trust God. We see this in verses six through eight. Listen to these verses. It says, I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. And here he goes. He says, I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. He says three things. He says, he's saying, you know, this is why I can trust God. Number one is God saw his affliction. So many times we think that God is millions of miles away and he is not paying any attention to us. And that's not true. That's what David says. He says, you know, David, David's saying, God, you saw what I was going through. You saw my tough times. You were, you, you were there. The second thing he says is God knows his distress. Now, what David's talking about is just not knowing something. It means God knows it, but he's also doing something for it. He's working things out. Um, I think of David in Psalm 23 about going through the valley. You know, the shepherd was always watching his sheep. He was with him. Uh, he, they were, he was watching them. And he was making sure they got through there safely. And this is what David is saying. Also, number three, God protected him. God delivered him. You know, when we go through valleys, there's a beginning and there's an end. This is what David is saying, because I can trust God because he sees what I go through. He's working things out and I know that he will protect me as we go through. Number three. So the next the third thing he says is David says, he talks about how we keep trusting him. There's two things. He talks about this in verses 23 and 24. He says, love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts in pride. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Two things, our trust in the Lord will not be lost if love keeps burning for him. As long as we continue to love our Lord, we can trust him. It's when we get away from that love, when we take our eyes off of Jesus, when we do that, and that love that we have for him just kind of goes away, then we lose that trust. What David is telling us is as long as we're in love with God, as long as we love him, you can't help but not love him, looking at the things that he's done for us. As long as that love is burning and really going, we can trust him. The second thing he says is be strong, is be courageous, be a lion. Uh, 
Don't back down, back up, or give up. Just keep on going for the Lord. And that's what he's talking about. So, I hope you enjoyed this. This is Psalm 31, and David's talking about trusting God. So, again, thanks for joining us. Let me just pray here real quick. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for what it says to us. Father, help us to keep on trusting you. And we see that we keep on trusting you is when we love you. And uh, Father, when we look at your word, we see how great you are and how much you love us in spite of ourselves. And Father, we thank you. So Father, take care of my brothers and sisters. Keep on letting us trust you and keep us strong so we can trust you. And Father, we can't wait to see what you'll do in the future. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks for joining us.